Hi guys and girls and welcome to Everything in Middle Earth and on today's show we'll be talking about the War of the Rohirrim. Now we haven't seen it yet but we'll be making some predictions, looking at some of the early reviews and hopefully getting you guys hyped or not as hyped for the film. So today I'm joined by the Hobbit fan editor um so please introduce yourself and tell us what you've been doing a little bit more about yourself sure so my name is chris uh, the hobbit fan editor as you just mentioned um i do movie reviews and we've done a number of collaborations in the past specifically on the rings of power and some other tolkien related stuff as well uh recently um me and a buddy of mine we've been reviewing all of the disney animated features so it's actually kind of tied in with this because i've got a love of animation and lord of the rings in terms of its film adaptations at least did kind of start out in the realm of animation you know you had the batchy stuff and the rankin bass so we kind of come full circle now we're coming back we're in the form of anime with this one so um i mean it's a it's a bold strategy it's uh it's never been done before not quite in this way so yeah i mean i don't know when this as of this recording we're just under a week away now um from release i think it comes out for us on the 13th of december so yeah um i have opinions based on uh, numerous trailers and clips and interview segments and whatnot and yeah um it, it's been a long time but i'm glad that we're having this discussion now to uh kind of get the preamble away before we watch it later this week and we get our full thoughts on it yes and as i can tell you're very excited about this film. <laughs> so uh, yes. we, i can't wait to see your initial <laughs> reaction but Let's go and delve straight into it with the synopsis of the film. So, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim. So, on IMDb, it says that this film is it has a runtime of 2 hours and 14 minutes. So, it's quite a lengthy film. Mm-hmm. And the synopsis is... A sudden attack by a wolf, a clever and ruthless Dunlending lord, seeking vengeance for the death of his father, forces Halm Hammerhand, the king of Rohan, and his people to make a daring last stand in the ancient stronghold of the Hornburg. So that's one of the synopses for the film. Um, so it's directed by... Kenji Kamiyama. It just reminds me. It just reminds me of that South Park skit um, when they're introducing. Is it the two chefs? It's like Kenji Kamiyama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why it just reminded me of that. But he's done it quite a few of the Japanese anime, which you know is works quite impressive in the animation um, aspect. Mm-hmm. And we've got writers such as Jeffrey Addis, Will Matthews, who I don't know, Theo, um, Phoebe Gittens, and also we have Philippa Bowens. So she is obviously the name that you recognise from the Lord of the Rings films. Mm-hmm. And this film is starring Brian Cox's Halm Hammerhand, Miranda Otto as Eowyn, for, for some reason. She's in it. Somehow um, Eowyn returned. <laughs> yeah, Eowyn's back. Gaia Weiss. And also, to my shock, we've got Billy Boyd as mm-hmm. Shank. What a name. <laughs> Very Tolkien S. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Tolkien went to London and, you know, got some inspiration. So instead of like Merry and Pippin in this, the two orcs are going to be like Prison and Shank or something. Yeah. Like, like... <laughs> You got Shaw Shank over here. Shaw Shank. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got Dominic Monaghan, who's going to yeah. be playing, I think it's Rot. That was Rot, it. Yeah. Yeah. One of them. So they're both in it, which surprised me. Um, But it's very interesting in that synopsis that there's no mention of the main character of the film. Now, I don't know if that was done on purpose. But I've read another synopsis, which is on Google, which says it's worded differently. So a sudden attack by a wolf, a ruthless Dunlending lord, 
forces Helm Hammerhand and his people to make a daring last stand in the ancient stronghold of the Hornburg. Finding herself in an increasingly desperate situation, Helm's daughter, Hera, must lead the resistance against a deadly enemy who's intent on total destruction. I think that one's probably the most accurate of the synopsis that you've just read. That is definitely 100%. Mm. And if you're thinking, oh, Harry, I've not read about her. Who's that? Well, Tolkien didn't write about her. She was an unnamed character, but she is going to be the main character in Helm Hammerhand's story. So... <laughs> It is going to be great. So what I wanted to ask you, Chris, when the trailer dropped or Mm -hmm. when you heard about the film initially back in, I think it was 2018. Yeah, it was a bit back ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. So when I thought, what was your hype? Were you hyped for it? I was completely bewildered at the beginning when I heard it was going to be done in anime style. Actually, it was kind of revolting against the idea. I was like, anime and Lord of the Rings, that really doesn't mix. And then kind of calmed down on it a bit and i was like well no think rationally as i said like lord of the rings started in animation you can kind of go larger than life with it and i was thinking of all of the possibilities i was thinking actually you know what the silmarillion might be cool in animation form actually like the biblical like the visuals and everything i thought you know what let's give it a shot i'm open to like different artistic interpretations of things um it's something completely different and then you start getting excited you hear about all the people coming back on board and you know philippa boynes and all these names attached to um the trilogy that we all love oh and then the hobbit trilogy i suppose as well don't love that one as much but the lord of the rings at least and i thought okay and then you have this sort of like strange landscape of these two rivaling companies currently adapting lord of the rings material tolkien material uh with amazon's rings of power speaks for itself and then it feels like with the people at warner brothers it's like no we'll show you how it's done this is this is the proper stuff um concept art was getting released i thought yeah this all looks pretty good i was a bit confused initially why like there was muma kill in there and everything like that but i thought it's a signifier people remember it there's a sense of nostalgia to it and then we got the trailer and i really held out with an open mind i really did and yeah i mean we did a, a, a bunch of videos on it actually kind of breaking it down shot for shot um our speculation on it where we think it's heading and the trailer it became abundantly clear what this was and what this was a vehicle for and it's it's a complete bait and switch they had me in the first half of the trailer when surprise they're actually adapting the story of helm hammerhand and you know you've got brian cox as well like you couldn't wish for a better helm hammerhand than that like brian cox is fantastic um but it yeah as i say it became abundantly clear that we're not getting that we are getting essentially princess mononoke we are we are getting yeah. unnamed daughter character and she's gonna it's gonna be her story it's gonna be her quest and you see that in interviews with philippa boynes she keeps saying um we felt drawn to this unnamed character that tolkien <laughs> never focused on at all it's like what are we doing but yeah in a nutshell i i was intrigued i was hyped And I guess, you know, even before the main release now, I'm still kind of intrigued to see just visually how it looks from an animation standpoint. Um, I know it's done in an anime style. I don't know if we can technically call it an anime film because it's sort of like a Western interpretation of anime, isn't it? I don't know. Does it actually have to be made, you know, in Japan to be anime? I I don't know. Um, But yeah. So that's kind of where my intrigue lies with this film is more based on its animation and not the actual uh, the, the things that are going to be in the film itself. I mean, I 100% agree. Like when it f- first came around, it was like, oh, OK, we've we've not had a Lord of the Rings animation film since the 70s. And it's you get that excitement, the nostalgia and for me it was the fact that you've got the rings of power coming out and that didn't look promising and for me it was now we've got something by warner brothers the way we've got some of the old team back and then you look at some of the cast announcements you've got brian cox and you're thinking damn this looks like it could be something and then you sort of get the drippings of what the plot's going to be and now 
just because, you know, I think they needed to name the character in in it because as a story, she does play a, a sort of pivotal part of it kicking off, you know, this marriage pact that doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do think that they needed to name her and give her some story. And I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if she's fighting but i think the problem for me is the fact that we get in a character who's kind of from what i've heard is kind of the best at everything who realistically shouldn't be and we're tying this film in the same universe as the lord of the rings films it's the same universe so for me you've got pending pending questions of this character is leading the resistance when she shouldn't be, then why isn't she a bigger name in the Lord of the Ring films, you know? Mm-hmm. Are they going to have some cover-up at the end? I don't know, but for me, it it doesn't feel relatable. It's, it feels like they've got an opportunity with a character rather than being sensible and realistic with the character. They're just going to go, Right, let's make her a badass yeah. without having her earn that. Mm-hmm. You know, apparently the the crux of the film is actually going to be based on her and Wolf's relationship. So we're going to see them growing up together and then seeing them getting close and then her rejection of him, mm-hmm. which is interesting that she's the one that's going to really kick it off because she's going to reject him rather than Helm. Um so I, I just I just feel that from what I've heard, the hype for me died pretty quickly. And when the trailer got dropped and you you see her chasing Moomakill and she's riding eagles and you think, hold on, where's Halm? Where's his two sons who are pivotal in it? And you think, this isn't going to go quite as well as we thought. It's going to be very different if you're expecting a law accurate film there will be beats in the film you know with the um battle at the hornberg and you know the fight outside yeah that'll be accurate but the rest of it i'd say predicting about 80 percent of it's going to be completely made up fan fiction which is disappointing because i'll and this is where i'm conflicted a little bit because i love animation i love anime so I'm thinking, if this wasn't a Lord of the Rings film, could I watch it and think differently? That's something that I'll have to judge when watching mm-hmm. it. But I've not heard great things about the character itself, so who knows? But that was my initial reaction. Um, what's your thoughts on what you've heard about Hera so far? And, and, and Halm Hammerhand, like, the lack of him. Well, yeah, I've barely seen Helmer Hammerhan to give you like a, a real opinion on his character, uh, like the visual design, sort of you know decked out in his in his armor and the war hammer and everything that he has Look, looks cool. I'm fine with that. And as I say, Brian Cox, uh, fantastic uh, actor and voice actor. So I don't think you could wish for a better casting of him. Uh, the film, as you mentioned, is two hours fourteen minutes. I think you said. So what I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get a very accurate. 14 minute adaptation of the story of Helm <laughs> Hammerhand and then two hours of Hera going on her adventures and uh what is it bringer of e- lover of eagles slayer of oliphants <laughs> and watchers in waters and whatnot okay we've got a watcher in the water in this as well uh, it's been creeping yeah. up on my facebook over this week sort of like concept art from it like little behind the scenes from warner brothers page saying um a creature similar to the watcher in the water this has three tentacles and dwells in the swamps i'm like you just wanted iconography in there didn't mm. you from the, the films that we know um but even just like you mentioned, like Hera, um, just visually, the character's design is so divorced and removed from anything Tolkienian in any way. Um, she doesn't match this culture of Rohan, um, of how they're meant to dress. And it, it this is very much tying into the movie canon. At least they really want it to, because the trailers made that abundantly clear. You know, jangling those keys of nostalgia at the very beginning, literally using live action footage from those movies and the the similar music and everything to get you hooked. That uh, Miranda Otto and the cast and the same mm. crew and whatnot, they want this to take place in that same universe. 
Yeah, in the same universe, as you mentioned, why isn't anyone throwing around Hera's name? Why isn't Eowyn mentioning, you know, why doesn't she look up to this ancient heroine that was Hera as her icon and idol? Um, Eomir, war is the province of men, Eowyn. And it just completely diminishes Eowyn's impact in that story of, um, you know, just wanting to get stuck in. This was not the done thing. This was not the culture. And as you said, like, I'm not, I, I get that the appendices itself is is just like scant few pages. I think it's maybe like two or three pages. And if you are adapting it into a, let's say it was even a, a 90 minute movie, of course, you've got to extend things out and you've got to potentially add extra characters in there or extra character dynamics and dialogue that doesn't appear in the book. I completely get that. Everything that comes with an adaptation. And there is a way to integrate the nameless daughter character. You can give her a name. You can give her some extra scenes, but don't make the film about her. And if you're going to have loads of scenes with her, don't girl boss her. And they've just gone for the lowest common denominator of what so many things are doing now. So many films and, and TV shows and whatnot. They think that this is how you write. A, this is They think this is how you have to write a strong female character. They see a strong female character, a masculine archetypes. It's riding into battle. It's donning yourself in armor, wielding a broadsword. Um, in the case of Morford Clark Galadriel on that cover where she's like sat and she's manspreading. Do you remember that? Where she's yeah. like hunched forward. All these masculine traits and it's that feels like it's almost a slap in the face to women and to female characters to say well the only way that we can make this girl compelling is if we make her more like a guy. I, I, I've never got that reasoning and if you just look at sort of like the hordes of girl boss characters that we've had when they're not written well and there's no sort of hero's journey, they're just fucking boring characters like Mary Sue's, if you want to throw that name around, Gary Stu's, you know, the same applies to male characters who are just amazing off the bat and there's no intrigue, there's no, you know, upheavals they have to overcome or whatnot. Um, and for the clips that I've seen as well, they've released a lot of clips. I was going to ask you this question, actually. What do you think to the marketing of this film so far on Warner Brothers' part? We've had sort of one proper trailer a while back, and this comes out next week, they haven't been pushing the trailers out for this thing, left, right, and center. They've released a few clips online. Um, even the song that they released, sort of like the mm. big end credit song, you know, in the sort of like the, the pantheons of Enya's May It Be and Annie mm. Lennox and even Billy Boyd. I remember when Battle of the Five Armies came out, that song alone was getting like millions of hits mm. on YouTube. Uh, video reactions, like people crying to that song and it was this love letter to not just the Hobbit trilogy finishing, but also like the whole saga, almost like Peter Jackson's goodbye to, um, you know, his entries of the Tolkien canon. We've got the song for this one, The Rider by Paris Paloma. And this has been out for three weeks and it's on 263,000 views. Doesn't seem like mm. that many for something that's the big December tentpole release, you know? Oh, well, that's a brilliant question, actually, because I didn't think about that. But the marketing's not been great. Like you say, this has got pr a prime slot, you know. The previous Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films have fallen around this date. And I've not seen this trailer on TV. I've not even mm -hmm. seen it pop up on, like, YouTube unskippable ads. I've not seen it anywhere. I don't I even th think I've got a trailer at the cinema actually. Like yeah, the films yeah. like attached to the beginning, you know. 100%. I've not seen anything about it and it comes to something that I think the Rings of Power's marketing's been far more superior to this. And that's saying something, you know. Uh -huh. We were talking about the Ballad of Damrod, but that <laughs> yeah, got us yeah. talking about it and that was yeah. months before the Rings of Power came out. And like you say, I, I've not listened to that song. I've not heard about that song. You know, it's only been, I'd say, the past week that I've started seeing, you know, interviews and other things that have come out. But we've not had a big campaign, a big push on the film. I don't know if they're just um, sort of relying on Lord of the Rings fans because there's definitely been no sort of marketing towards quote-unquote normie fans mm -hmm. you know the normal cinema going fans I, I've, I've, I've not seen anyone who you know from people i've worked with or speak to who've gone 
ah, the War of the Rohirrim, I want to go see that. There's been nothing. Um, From so... what I've heard as well, I think um, a lot of people are kind of turned off that it's animated as well. Mm. Like just people that I've spoken to, I said like, oh, you go to see that film, they're like, oh, I'm not really keen on animation like that or that kind of animation. Um, or maybe they just don't think it works with Lord of the Rings. I mean, we'll watch anything Lord of the Rings, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> you know, good or bad Lord of Mercy. We've got through two seasons of the Rings of Power. So, you know, we keep watching yeah. the stuff, but I think it, it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes over with, you know, quote unquote normies. Cause I mean, Lord of the Rings was, you know, it was an incredibly popular book. Of course it was, um, you know, massively selling, but the subject matter was very, heavy i'd say for sort of like average moviegoers and you know it was a gamble that paid off um you know worldwide phenomenon and everything like that um i i don't know maybe they are just thinking that the success of those films is what's going to drive that initial interest to this one but uh december release it's got some competition as well because sonic 3 you know um Ooh. for kids that that's going to be a big mm. one moana 2 came out like a couple of weeks ago that's probably going to dip off though uh, you got paddington which is very very popular as well um i thought there was something else coming out in december as well that maybe i'm forgetting um but yeah anyway so the fact is like they it's got that prime slot in december but there's a lot of other stuff on the market as well um and i don't know if this is going to earn those repeat viewings yeah uh, that maybe the lord of the rings and maybe even the hobbit did as well I 100% agree, and I can't see it having a long runtime in the cinema. And mm. I was thinking then, you know, could this be appealing to young families? But then the age rating's 12A, so you're not going to have those younger kids going. So I really would love to see, A, the budget, and C, mm. and B, sorry, what they're aiming for in terms of sales, because I can only think of dedicated Lord of the Rings fans and potentially anime fans going to see it, but your average cinema goer, they'll probably go and watch something else, a Sonic, rather than, you know, watching two hours and mm. 15 minutes of Lord of the Rings animation. Um, so that's going to be very interesting, actually, to see that. Um, I think I think it'll probably run for a week or two and then pull it down. I, I know, mm-hmm. I remember the Joker number two didn't Oof. have a long running time. No, that was on streaming in less than a month, I think it was, yeah. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can see that if this doesn't have a brilliant um, run out, I can't see it staying out for long. I, I 100% don't think it's making a billion. No, 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 100%. no. 100%. It won't get the Disney numbers. Um, I mean, I mean, what, realistically, what, what would you say number-wise? Number-wise, it, it's difficult. They haven't actually released the budget, have they, for this thing, which is very interesting, because usually that um, that's in the information about it. <sighs> I think it will have a fair opening weekend, but then I think it, as you mentioned, it will have a big drop off. Three hundred fifty million, maybe, maybe four hundred. Yeah, I, I honestly can't see it doing more than that. Like, what's um? Let's go with like a Disney film right now, okay? So let's just check how much Moana Two's made, uh, which has been getting kind of lukewarm reception. It's been out for a few weeks. Okay, so that's at 600, but that's like a big Disney film. This, you know, 12A, a long film as well. And I think if it is geared more towards that teenage adult kind of thing, would the animation put them off? Is there inherently in the back of people's minds, the average moviegoer, when they see something animated, they think it's automatically for kids? And yeah. then they're going to look at the age range or maybe the kids are too young to like watch Lord of the Rings stuff or maybe it just won't hold their attention. They'll skip it and as i mentioned go and see one of the many other films that comes out this december um i don't think it's getting up there i think maybe like 300 400 mil i can't see it making more than that just having a look on um variety they put an article out saying that muana 2 hit 600 million at global box office Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim fizzles overseas with 2 million debut. Oh. So, oh. that's not great to say no, that. No, it could be a could be a huge flop potentially for this film then. It says that so it 
made two million from three thousand four hundred and ten screens in thirty one territories. Um and it's so common, isn't let's it? yeah. have a look. So it opens in North America um in forty two offshore markets on December the thirteenth. Mm. Um top earning territories so far with Spain with three hundred and forty seven thousand, followed by Mexico and then Thailand. Mm. But obviously like the big markets haven't opened up yet. So um they're just the early markets. But you're looking at two million there. You know, I think North America will probably get your biggest amount mm-hmm. in and you know, I it, it it's one of them and you look at the poster, you know, you look how you know, China are with, with Star Wars sort of stuff when you had mm-hmm. um certain female leads you know they didn't really market it as much you know will it break china will it get into that market i don't know and will this potentially throw a spanner in the works for other projects if it it's shown as not being that great i think it won't do it for the hunt for Gollum, but i think for any other lord of the rings animated adaptations Mm. i think if this doesn't do great in terms of the box office I think they'll they will abandon it. Yeah, I was, I was about to ask you, what do you think the ramifications of this will be if this flops? And yeah, you're 100% right. I think it'll put the kibosh on any form of animated Lord of the Rings content for a, a considerable while because um, they go where the money's at. Of course, they do. They're a business. Um, I, I think the hunt for Gollum, especially if you're bringing all the names back they want to, I think that will generate the buzz and the hype. And I think that will bring a lot of money in for sure. Um, but I think if this is a success, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. You're going to be getting a lot more of these side stories in probably animation form. Maybe not this same kind of animation, potentially. They might mix it up, but yeah, I don't see this making a lot. And even just like the clips that I've seen as well, um, this isn't me just kind of, you know, looking at the trailer. Actual clips that Warner Brothers have released of these characters, they've released like a full like eight and a half minutes of the film. And the voice acting is is just really really bad um mm. especially from the uh i want to say that the title character of helm hammerhand but it's not is it the title <laughs> character of hera um very very flat stilted delivery on the dialogue and it, it does kind of remind me a, a character in a lot of ways reminds me of ray nothing against daisy ridley but it's certainly in the first couple of those films you know um force awakens and last jedi very flat awkward delivery on a lot of the lines you know like master skywalker kylo ren is evil and we need you to help us fight them and it's it, very flat and emotionless and stilted mm-hmm. kind of wooden not much range and from the clip that i saw that's kind of hero's character it's the most sort of like cliched lines that you could throw together just really cringy shit there's a there's a moment in the um in the clip where I'm guessing it's perhaps towards the end of the film. Um, you've got this standoff between Hera and Wolf and they're kind of opposite ends of this um, gangplank, this drawbridge thing. And Wolf's got his uh, right-hand man. And Hera's kind of calling Wolf out. She's like, you know, I, I'm going to stop you and let my people go. She drops a Moses quote. Uh, <laughs> she's all dressed in angelic white kind of bridal gown. Uh, on a white horse and she's holding her arms outstretched with a sword in one hand like a come at me bro kind of pose and the right hand man behind wolf says don't give in to the bait sir she's clever this one thank you for validating her and how great she is in the dialogue there great writing and he takes the bait and he's like i will stop you and she's like you will try or it's really really Mm. shit like saturday morning cartoon dialogue in fact there's saturday morning cartoon dialogue that's better than this and i thought this is this is a clip that warner brothers have released on their youtube page this is something they're proud of to get people in and if anything it's repulsed me I, i've the, the trailer already cemented what the film's going to be about but then there might be you know the benefit of the doubt you might be like oh, okay well let's see how they handle Hera's character maybe the it's a good performance maybe there's some quality to the writing 
and that was quickly dissipated from pretty much every single clip I've seen of this thing. So, yeah, it's good. I think it's going to be a rough watch uh, next. Mm. So, so I'm seeing it Saturday. Uh, I don't know when this is coming up, but um, the 14th I'll be watching this. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah but the pop the popcorn bucket's cool though i'm gonna try and get one of those if i can if it's released in this country uh i'll send you a picture afterwards but it's um it's like a big warhammer it's like a Ooh. like with the handle and everything and the popcorn buckets at the top so does it have anything on the june bucket <laughs> no <laughs> I, i'm not Nothing interested. ever will <laughs> they must have known what they were doing with that i don't know how that got past but Definitely. Yeah. Not quite I, as fun as that one. But... No. <laughs> well, I wanted to talk to you about this topic. Uh, now, we saw in the trailer that Saruman will be returning in the yeah. War of the Rohirrim. Now, they will be using his voice, but I think, and from my understanding, I think it's f- they're using audio from pre the previous films so according to the comic book um so they had an interview with philippa bowens and she says that they she reached out to um Geety, lady lee who sadly no longer with us um i think that's his wife i think mm-hmm. um and she said that um, the thing that I think Peter Jackson felt in his heart, which was that Sir Christopher would have wanted this, Bowens explained. And so we went into his records. I got to go back and hear his voice, not just doing the lines, but talking to us as we were recording them. And we based it on a line from The Hobbit, which is, are you in need of assistance, my lady? a version of that line from there bowens explained how they search through multiple takes to find a way to use in the actual film now actually from that line it makes me think is saruman gonna be having a interaction with Hera with that line of are you in need of assistance my lady oh god i mean saruman is in the story, uh, at the very end, he does rock up. Um, I believe he shows up to Freya Laugh, doesn't he? Who inherits the throne at the end. Um, kind of curries favour with him and, you know, good standing with Isengard and whatnot. I think it's Freya Laugh. Um, so, if anything, Saruman will be coming into it, should be, towards the end of the story. But, yeah, are they just going to change the course of history? They've played very fast and loose with the source material before, even in, in the Lord of the Rings films. I, I think their heart was in the right place with most of those adaptation decisions, maybe not so much with Hobbit films, but... Oh, God. So, okay, on the one hand with this, because it, it is a weird issue, isn't it? Because we, we mm. see a lot of studios do this, namely Disney, and you have these CGI recreations of, um, you know previous you know dead actors uh posthumous and they always go oh it's what they wanted or our heart was in the right place with it and it's a very sticky issue it's a very like big gray area i think you know on the one hand it's cool maybe continuity wise to see these characters still in the film but then otherwise you're like but what are the moral you know the moral quandaries around it and is it what they really would have wanted so i'm glad they're not using ai um and they are just pulling from previously recorded lines if that's the case but then does that mean every single saruman line in this film if, if he does have like a big speaking part is just going to be cliff note lines that we've already heard from the previous films um so if, if he literally just rocks up and says are you in need of assistance i'll be like oh, he said that in the hobbit uh, but then every other line let's say the conversation continues is it just going to be like this awkwardly edited together conversation from lines of, of his previous parts in a, a Saruman. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it. It sounds like they're going to be using um, different takes of it as well, so it sounds a little bit different. And it's one of them, I kind of prefer that rather than them doing the... Um, oh, it's like James Earl Jones with yes. Vader, wasn't it, in the Kenobi series? Yeah, it was really awkward. You know, where it's like, okay, we're going to use AI 
yeah. um to do that i i mean if they were going to have his voice in and the character's going to be in it i think that would be my preferable way is just use old mm-hmm. lines but you know the recording device for audio from I don't, 1998 to now you know it's going to sound different it's going to be a lot of editing to make it sound you know mm-hmm. up to date so i'll be interested to see that um but they said they had permission from his late wife and i think that's for me that's it's sort of a validation it's like okay they've got permission but i still find it a little bit i don't know i feel a little bit uneasy over it because it's like yes he's he loved lord of the rings but you haven't directly got his permission you're still using his name so i still find it a little bit little bit uneasy what do you think about it yeah well when it's a very bold statement to just say it's what he would have wanted it's like you can't make that call (laughs) you know so it's uh god the lady balls on her to say something like that so um yeah like as i say like it's not like they've crowbarred in saruman he is in that part of the story at the very end he is present in the whole rohan relations and it will tie into the lord of the rings films eventually um and i guess yeah if you know the decision is either pull from old lines and old material old behind the scenes stuff maybe that they've got maybe lines that we haven't heard from scenes that were removed from even the lord of the rings that they can use either that or ai yeah they, they, they're going from stuff that they already have so i'll give them a point for that i suppose but we'll have to see how it is and maybe they might not mention this maybe they have augmented some stuff with ai we, we don't know we won't know until we see it well, you've but... got to kind of think of, like, the sort of dialogue that he's having. You can't imagine him being very aggressive. So I think they'll probably pull most of the stuff from The Hobbit. From her quotes, it sounds like most of it's going to be pulled from that, from the White Council meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have to wait and see on that. I just don't know if it's going to be, like, this awkwardly edited, stitched together thing, like... Yeah smoke rises from roha like you know it's like up and it's down because you've like chopped and changed and stitched this whole thing together it won't be like that I've, I've, i'll you know i'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll edit it properly we'll see wow fingers crossed <laughs> so we move on to the reviews the early reviews now mm-hmm. from what i've been hearing apparently the goods the positives for the film or the animation's meant to be really good. Uh, it's meant to stand out. Obviously, with animation, you unlock your creative potential. You can have more interesting battle scenes, which I've heard that the fighting is meant to be cool visually, mm. and, you know, you get the scale of the battles, and, you know, we see Helm's Deep. It looks amazing on the animation, and um, the Hornby, it looks brilliant. I've heard that the music's good, it, but it's only good because I think 80% of it is from the original score mm-hmm. of The Lord of the Rings, and the rest is um, made up of new stuff. So obviously, that 80% is going to win a lot of people over. I think... I guess it, that means then this can't be nominated for like best original score, can it? If it's If it's using a lot of those previous themes i guess oh um, i don't know what the um what the rules are for that yeah i don't know about that because like they won the oscar didn't they for the music and it is a rehash of most of mm-hmm. it um that'd be very i mean they could yeah because sequel the... nominated do they like two towers wasn't nominated for like best score or return of the king was it because it can't be original mm. score it would just be from fellowship right i actually don't know i actually don't know about that maybe i'm wrong I know that probably the song that you mentioned that could get nominated. Um, if or did it win? Because Return of the King won like all the Oscars, didn't it? So maybe, sure. maybe it was nominated for. Yeah, maybe I'm just talking daft with that. I'm pretty. But yeah, sure. Stephen Gallagher. I can't click on his name, so I don't know if he's done much music before. I don't know what his credits are before this film. I'm pretty sure Howard Shaw won it for. Oh, did he win it for Into the West? <coughs> I'm pretty sure he won it for that. I'm not sure. That was original it. song, wasn't it, with mm. Annie Lennox? But I don't know about score. Let's have a Let look. Have a... 
Yeah. Um, return of the King. Let's have a look. I remember um, watching. I remember staying up and watching the awards ceremony that year for that. He said. It says on here he won best original score. Oh, okay. Okay, so, fair enough um, then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I, I, there's not going to be a lot for that guy. What was his name? Who's the composer? Stephen Gallagher? Yeah, it's a hell of a ratio, isn't it? Eighty percent of previously used shit, and then twenty <laughs> percent yeah. new. I think if it does win the Oscar, you know, should give it to Howard Shaw. Let's have it right. 100%. Or cut the statue in half. Give give him twenty percent. Give Howard Shaw eighty percent of the statue. I I've heard as well that this plays in good good positive but also for me a bit of negative is that a lot of the film relies on nostalgia yeah which is great it's like oh you know we get to see this location and that we get to hear this music this soundtrack we get to hear you know previous actors but for me if that's what you're relying on that's where your movie's gonna fall short and i feel like it will for this Mm. film um i've heard for negatives as well i've heard that the main character is quite weak um like i say there's nothing wrong if you're gonna make a you know a fighter and that if you're gonna have her be a badass you know make a humble make her learn but i feel and what i've heard is that she's quite pretentious and she's been compared Mm to um Lady Gladwell from the Rings of Power, which is not a good thing to be oh, compared to. No. Um, so, <laughs> oh no! Oh no! And you can kind of get that vibe from the trailer. Hundred percent from the clips. Yeah, yeah. Um, Basically, when she's on that drawbridge, it's it's essentially that like there is a tempest in me. It's just ah, shut up. <laughs> yeah. I've also ah, heard shut up. that the film drags on quite a bit um, as well. Do you reckon isn't... this is going to get an extended cut? Like all the other adaptations, or Ooh, do you reckon it it's going to be do. in this like fold out four disc set next year? Maybe. I mean, it, I would be interested to see how they made it. To be mm-hmm. honest, and they they did it for the Hobbit and they did it for the Lord of the Rings, so I can't see why not. But it's one of them. If it flops pretty badly, would they be bothered mm. to chuck it out? Um, but I'd be interested in watching it. To be fair. Um, have you heard anything about the reviews so far? Or um, I'm I'm haven't read any actually. I've heard some that have seen like an early screening of it, and they've just said it's basically your worst fears imagined. You know, everything that you thought was going to happen from the trailer, it is that. Um, here is you know total girl boss. I have heard actually some of the comparisons with um galadriel for um I, i've heard the pacing's quite bad um it, it really drags for that two hours um because it's, it's considerable runtime for an animated film it really is and it's as i say it's not a long story in the appendices so that in a combination with hero essentially being the main character which she will be she'll be amazing at everything that everyone will love her and she'll be amazing and inspirational i was actually going to mention this because we were talking about the Hera, like Eowyn would be talking about Hera if if she looked up to, you know, like the previous heroines of, of Rohan. Is that why they have Miranda Otto back? Is it going to be pushing this kind of like hashtag girl power kind of mm. thing? Or do you think it is actually going to be Eowyn? Because I mean, Miranda Otto's voice will have aged 20 odd years, you know, since the film came out. Do you think in canon it is going to be Eowyn recalling back and going oh there was a tale of a woman who inspired me in my efforts in the war of the ring and let me tell you this story do you think there's going to be like a framing device kind of like old bilbo in the hobbit films and then it goes back 100 percent, 100 percent. i think having her narrate it and i think you'll have that it'll open up with a with a book with a kid, you see Faramir being a cook in the background. Yes, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> in the background. And she'll yeah. be reading the, these stories and, you know, then we'll travel into, you know, Helm Hammerhand and, you know, for some reason she knows about Hera but doesn't say anything or mention anything about it in The Lord of the Rings. And then 
it'll end on that Bilbo moment where she'll close the book, put the kids to bed, and then that'll be it. One of the kids is going to be a daughter, and the the daughter will like get out of bed and like pick up her mom's sword, pick up Eowyn's sword. It'll be like Broom Kid from the end of Last Jedi. Oh. That's my prediction. I'm probably totally wrong. I'm probably going to be completely wrong with that, the whole framing device and everything. But when I heard Miranda Otto was cast, I thought, right, are you just doing this for nostalgia? You know, like, hey, you remember her? You remember Eowyn? Everyone loves her. But because there's so much of a push to make Hera God's frigging, Eru's frigging gift to humanity <laughs> in this film, um, there's got to be a rhyme and a reason for having Eowyn there. And I think if they have got her, it's pro- they are probably going to integrate some kind of framing device. I don't think they'll just throw you straight in the story, like the trailer itself, where it opens with those live action Lord of the Rings elements and then gradually ingratiates you into this animated world. I think it's probably going to do something similar with the actual film. You know what? That is one hell of a shout. And I reckon you're right there. We'll you know. see. <laughs> I was also heard, and it's shock spoilers, but I heard that this film doesn't really respect or go along the lines with the law. I say it's pretty accurate. Yeah, I I think there is beats that will be there. So, like I say, with the fight outside with Helm and Helm's death, spoilers. But um, (laughs) I think it's about again about eighty percent made up fan fiction and the rest is relating to the law which for me is an adaptation that's meant to be taking us back to middle earth Mm -hmm. for there to be a lack of substance there is quite um underwhelming really and disappointing and it'll be interesting because obviously this is speculation now but after seeing it, it's going to be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate that cavalier attitude as well that they have where it's like, and, and they do this in Rings of Power where they say, well, we don't know that Tolkien didn't, you know, do this with the character. He didn't write it, but it could have happened. I hate that. Yeah. I really, really hate that so much. It's just, you know, unnamed daughter character. Well, you know, we've got to give her a name. Fair enough. But because we don't hear about her, she could be going off and talking to fucking Gwai here, the Lord of the Eagles. You know, she could be fighting Moomakill. And just on that topic of Moomakill and creating our own thing and whatnot, this was posted uh, by Weta Workshop. And actually, I, I sent you this as a, a picture mm-hmm. message. Um, I was questioning why we've got Moomakill and why they're trekking around the plains of perhaps Rohan. I, I don't know where they're trekking around, but I'm going to read a little bit of this. So the concept art for it and everything. So the Moomakill in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy are tusky and towering, great beasts that can cut through elves and men like grass. For director Kenji Kamiyama's anime film, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, this giant elephant-like creature needed to be daunting, but not impossible to potentially kill. So our design team thought about how a subspecies might have evolved in Middle-earth, one smaller in stature, Mini Moomakill, if you will. Uh, uh, that is an actual post from Weta Workshop. That was a few days ago on their um, on their Facebook page. Um, uh, to potentially kill. Uh, so it's going to be okay. Hera can take on an Oliphant. Step aside, Legolas. You know, I know he's an <laughs> elf and he's super powered. And yeah, that part in the film is pretty ridiculous. But at least it's kind of essentially the punchline to what was a, a running joke throughout that trilogy. And it's, you know, go big or go home. It was the grand finale to that kill count thing. That cavalier attitude of, oh, we thought one might have evolved in Middle Earth, despite not being on the equator in Middle Earth and completely different regionally from that attitude is what I hate. And I feel like this film is going to be rife with that, especially if you mentioned from reviews, it plays fast and loose with the law and basically is a fan fiction a fan fiction when it really didn't need to be as i say you know you are going to have to go in and flesh some bits out but stay true to the story and the actual through line of the story um surprise surprise tolkien actually knew what he was doing um 
and I just wish they'd remember that sometimes. <laughs> a lot Mate, of times. <laughs> you could literally have said that about the past, what, five years of Lord of the Rings content. Tolkien knew what he was well, doing. <laughs> yeah, well, even the Hobbit films, right, as well? Yeah, 100%. I mean, oh. it, it's basically been spectacle over substance, and it looks like it's going to continue. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to hear a few of the ratings and the reviews? Actually... So, so so far there's been. Let's have a look. There's been eight hundred reviews mm-hmm. on IMDb. Can you guess what the rating is so far? Is it out of um out of, out 10. of ten? Is yeah. it out of ten? Ooh, um... So there's been eight hundred and ninety four reviews. See, I'm thinking Tolkien shills might have got into it, though. Um, I'm going to say, is it sitting around sort of like a seven, maybe? You know what? You're bang on. Oh, wow. Okay. But I thought that was quite high at the moment. It's like high end of average, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, no, quite low because normally, because it hasn't been released yet, you normally get like, you know, shills watching it first and that would possibly boost it up. But it's quite low so far and it's not been screened to any mm. of the major countries so seven bang on seven out of ten which is not great beforehand mm. you know but i'll read a couple of the positive ones warning there will be some spoilers in here so mm-hmm. if you want to skip this part i'll leave a timestamp in the hero saves the day and kills everyone and is amazing yeah, and then for some reason she becomes subservient again. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, well, she's got to, hasn't she? Because there needs to be a king of Rohan, so she's going to have to back down. Well, we don't know we'll see. that Tolkien necessarily wanted it that way. Maybe he wanted Hera to be the queen. Ah, Rohan. well, we'll, we'll see. see. So we got an 8 out of 10. Excellent film. I was so emerged in the style of the film, of which is surprising and a wonderful script. The female... <laughs> right, this is a line. The female who voiced the role is also very good 70% of the time. Imagine going into... So specific. I know. Imagine <laughs> going into a film going, you know Walking Phoenix and the Joker? 70% of the time he's good. 30% of the time he was shite. Like... You wouldn't call that a good performance, then, would you? If it's like, oh, such yeah, it's not great. Num- yeah, such a specific number. But here you go. It's a beautiful take and a wonderful story that draws you in as the director and crew did an amazing job. Getting it early before everyone else helps since I'm a union scriptwriter. Okay. Ooh. Characters come off su- superb storyline makes sense um some lines were off putting but in the end the audience will be pleased to see lord of the rings films <clears throat> are just as perfect as this one mm. so bearing in mind keep that in your head that the return of the king the fellowship of the ring the two towers are just as perfect as the war of the rohirrim so when you watch it just think about that <laughs> we have oh yeah. i will be i'll be at the cinema thinking i could have stayed home and watched fellowship of the ring tonight as yeah. to this shit. <laughs> but if i do get my warhammer popcorn bucket then that will make the night worth it so yes. we'll see. and who knows we, you might get some swords out of it who knows yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we've also got a we got a 10 out of 10 here we've got two 10 out of 10s so i was skeptical at first this being an anime and all and oh boy, were my doubts erased. This is the exact Lord of the Rings movie we were all expecting to see when the Hobbit, when the Hobbit first came out. And we were stuck with those droopy dwarves. This one has heart. He, he, is it hero? Heroes? I, I don't know that word. Fuck it. You want to cheer for the main character. It has everything Hobbit or rings of power lack i absolutely do not agree with many other users complaining about ai the plot being over stereotypical or basic or the movie being too long 
If anything, it could be twice as long and I would still enjoy it. Another masterpiece of a movie. Highly recommend to all Lord of the Rings fans. So keep in mind that this movie will be a masterpiece. It's better than The Rings of Power and The Hobbit. You just go back to that quote there when he said, like, this is the film we were all expecting or wanting to see when The Hobbit came out 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah, so... I don't think in the back of my mind I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm watching <laughs> Desolation of Spad, but I'll tell you what I could go for right now. I could go for, like, a Japanese anime-style story on Helm Hammerhan. <laughs> that never entered my fucking mind. What's he talking about? Really? It entered mine. It's like the, what is it, <laughs> we think about the Romans every day. It's like that sort of quote. We've been thinking about this Japanese anime yeah, the quote is, this is the um, exact Lord of the Rings movie we were all expecting to see when The Hobbit first came out. We were all. We were all expecting to see, including everyone in that. Speak for yourself, Victoria <laughs> KR19. <laughs> oh, Victoria, sorry, I said he. Yeah, sorry, my apologies. Right, we got uh, the last 10 out of 10 on here. Oh, here we go. Um, titled... True return to Middle Earth. After many years of waiting for another good adaptation of Professor Tolkien's works, we finally get a really good movie. I am not a fan of anime style, but I loved every second of this movie. The animation is the piece of art, okay, and the War of the Rohirrim totally destroyed the Rings of Power. PJ is back. My friend and Middle Earth is back for a big screen. And this movie is a begging of that. What? And I know that after this moment, we'll get more and more excellent movies based on works by the professor. Can't wait for The Hobbit, um, The Hunt for Gollum. So raise our glasses and thanks J.R. Tolkien and Peter Jackson. Okay. He, his name isn't attached in any way to this. He hasn't even got a producer. He might have like an executive producing credit on this, but you know, thank you, Kenji. You know, I know, or, yeah, or Philippa Boynes, or who else fucking produced this film? Uh, Jason DeMarco, Joseph Chat. No, okay, Peter Jackson, sure. Yeah, it's like great, like amazing. You might as well thank fucking Vigo Mortensen for being in it. <laughs> like, and that's true. Like, where is Kenji? No one's thanked him yet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now we get on to the good ones. Oh, here we go. So we got a... these. This is quite a long one. So are these still got... the positives now? Are these, or are these the no. negative ones now? No, we've, we've turned... We've gone into oh. the bad ones. You turned so her got, against me. We've got three more reviews left. So five out of ten. Whoever wrote this has never had a normal conversation with an intelligent human being before. <laughs> Basically, they repurposed the characters and the events of the Two Towers into a one-dimensional teenage fan fiction. The dialogues are so horrid and cringe at points that makes you want to scream. Um, also, a Michael everyone... Jackson song. Yeah, <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> make you want to scream, <laughs> mate, I, mate. I wouldn't be surprised if Jacko's in there with bubbles. Yeah, he's fighting a mumi kill. <laughs> <laughs> Just hear him like riding around down the mumi kills, <laughs> going hee hee. It's like you see bubbles just chucking shit. Oh, would be more interesting to be fair. I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd watch the hell out of that. <laughs> the proper Jackson, not Peter. Let's get MJ on board. I want Bo Selectors, Michael Jackson. Yes. Oh, that's oh. a re- that's a retro reference right there. For anyone Bloody who knows hell. what we're talking about. Get him and Craig David back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, he also says that also everyone is just standing around and doing nothing at dramatic events. The king is in danger. Well, let's just watch it as it unfolds. God forbid we do anything. I know dramatic effect, but people do not behave like that. Especially when your king is in danger and you and you are his gods, I seriously believe the writers have watched the TT a couple of times. I think he means two towers, and thought yeah. to themselves, "I can do better." The well-developed characters are from the two towers, their logical decision making and their passion is all missing here. Unfortunately, 
all the characters in the War of the Rohirrim are just cardboard cutouts at times. The two brothers are the the two brothers are the one with the axe and the other with the instrument. That is all their depth and individu- <laughs> individuality. I shall fight thee with the power of music. <laughs> instrument? Which, which instrument? He's got some drum and bass in the background. It's like a harp or was yeah. the harp invented? Like, what was he playing? Fiddle? Uh, don't know. We, we, we'll soon see. And um, they say they are there to die a dramatic death and move the plot forward for Hera. Ah. The music is good. It builds on nostalgia, and I loved tunes from the movie. That fits well, at least for me. The animation is well made. I like the anime, the anime style of the movie. These go for it. However, th- they will not save this movie from being a total missed opportunity. Too bad. I mean, that's not... I mean, that's pretty scathing, to be honest. That is pretty scathing. I'm wondering, because you mentioned there the music, Nostalgia, Nostalgia, and you said like 80% of the score is repurposed, right, from the other films. I'm wondering if that's a studio decision from yeah. Warner Brothers, because I know with, uh, as another comparison here, I know that John Williams apparently, I think there's a video sort of breaking it down, wrote a lot of new music for Rise of Skywalker, Episode Nine. Now, that was a shit movie anyway, but apparently he did write a lot of new music, but... I don't know if it was Disney or J.J. Abrams was like, no, let's use that original track from Empire Strikes Back in that point. Let's use that song from Return of the Jedi in this part. So it's a lot of for nostalgia that everything you see in the interviews was like, we wanted to make people remember that moment from that previous Mm -hmm. film. We wanted to make them feel the same thing. So we used exactly the same track here, even if thematically it made no sense at all. So... Yeah, I'm wondering if they did write a stack of perhaps new tunes for all these characters and they were just like, ah, just put the Rohan theme in. People know that. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, look at the trailer. Like, the opening, what, 30 Mm -hmm. seconds is like, we're taking you back to Middle Earth and it shows all the clips from the films. It's like, okay, um, this is a War of the Rohirrim trailer, not (laughs) not your previous films. (laughs) So I wouldn't be surprised. And we get more of the same from this next comment. The same cliché, only women are right. It's a pity that the story lacks originality, as nowadays stories, women are the one who know, the one who can do everything correctly. From the beginning of the movie, you realise there is one daughter, so she is the best one, she is the only and unique. The childhood, the childhood friend who become obsessed with her he became crazy because she rejected his marriage proposal. The animation is mostly good, but there are some scenes that made me think I wasn't watching an animated movie, but a cheap series. The movie uses nostalgia to attract viewers. Even the music is not new. At least something should have been composed for the film. I would not watch it again. I mean... From mm. all of your worries that you stated before, it it's it pretty much just hit everyone. Yeah, there and again, it's you know you can have a a strong female character, but you've got to make them likable. Mm-hmm. You've got to make them relatable, and don't for any character, don't make them the best straight away and be arrogant mm-hmm. with any character with any sexuality, anything. You just put people off. You know, what so... really annoys me there is you mentioned, I think you have mentioned this before actually, but it must have slipped my mind that Hera is the one to turn down Wolf's marriage proposal. Um, they've clearly gone, well, we didn't like how she was kind of like this, as like Jasmine says in Aladdin, you know, pr- some prize to be won. They're kind of like deciding her fate and, you know, who she marries and whatnot. But guess what? Historically, traditionally, that is how things used to go down, especially in places of, you know, like royalty and monarchy and things like that. But also, doesn't that completely diminish the entire reason as to why Helm Hammerhand, you know, kills um, uh, Freka outside? And doesn't that, isn't that just like just an absolute show of love for a father, for you know, to his daughter? In the this, you know, this ne'er do well comes in this frecker and says, "I, yeah, I want it. I want your your son. Uh, sorry, my son to marry your daughter." And Hammerhand's Hammer, Hammer like, "Absolutely not." And then that pisses off frecker, and then that leads to obviously, you know, him being knocked out and killed outside. 
that is a huge pivotal moment in, in my opinion when i read that and there's you know there's only like two pages of the appendices but that says so much of, of how much honor helm hammerhand has for his children and and this unnamed daughter character and now they've they've clearly looked at that and just misinterpreted that completely and gone oh well we don't like that hera doesn't have any kind of agency as to who she marries and whatnot and she deserves to you know decide who she um you know who, who she marries and whatnot so we're going to put the agency in her hands she's going to be the one to turn him down when you know historically it'd be like have a dad here, you know, take a seat, like, you know, the men are talking. And that's just his historically how it was. You don't have to like it in the modern age, but guess what? This isn't the modern age, is it? This is based on history and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, to me, that just completely shanghais the whole crux, the, the inciting incident of the story of the death of mm. Frecker and the events leading up to it. Yeah. And I, it's... It's one of them, you know, you predicted it when we watched the trailer and before that, and I can't see it changing. I think you'll, you'll be right all along, mate. I think this Man, is going to be a watch tough that, watch. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, this is going to be a, tra gonna be a travesty. This is going to be so hard to sit through next week. Um, I'm actually kind of dreading it now. It'll be great to talk about, you know, it'll be another therapy session, as we always say when we talk about mm. Rings of Power. Um is this is this just kind of the new norm now is this going to be the new norm for tolkien adaptations which i hope not i really want something you know as equally as good as the original lord of the rings trilogy but you know when i see where we're where we're at now as a I sound like joking now as a society mm. but in terms of you know media and everything i keep saying it but i'm so glad the lord of the rings films were made when they were could you imagine mm. those films getting made today uh, they'll get remade at some point. Harry Potter's getting a remake. Um, it's only a matter of time. If uh, this bombs, which I, you know, you know, that's debate. I think it probably will, or it will lose a lot of money. It at least won't have the impact that they thought it would. Hunt for Gollum is going to be interesting. I think if that tanks, they'll probably go right. Let's just remake. It's like uh, with, um, well, also Warner Brothers, isn't it? They did the Fantastic Beasts films, which weren't a success and played with problems and didn't really garner the same kind of interest so what have they done they've gone right let's go for broke let's remake harry potter people know harry potter harry potter sells and i think they'll probably go the same route with lord of the rings if these sort of side projects falter and fail then i think we'll probably be getting a remake before too long yeah 100 percent. and i'm gonna make a bold prediction for <sighs> All of bold predictions for go. Gollum. Mm -hmm. I reckon Aragorn won't be alone. I reckon he'll be with Arwen for the hunt for Gollum. I'm just going to put it out there. I've got nothing to go off of that. No rumours or anything. Dude, just, you're so right. You're if so that right. happens, it's... Yeah, that'll be fun. But it's one of she them. She does where... sneak up on Aragorn in Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. What's this? A ranger caught off his guard. She's the fastest rider as well in that movie. She says that yeah. to him. Oh God, I think you might be right. Yeah, it is like that Dumb and Dumber scene, isn't it? Where uh, they're like they're picking up the hitchhikers, and Jim Carrey just goes, "Pick them <laughs> up!" It's just you know, get everyone involved. Screw it. Yeah, I mean, Vigo Mortensen wants to go back, but everyone wants he, to, apparently. Isn't he, like, 66 years old now? Yeah. And, I mean, it's 2026, isn't it? It's meant to be coming out, so... Yeah. yeah 68, my God. God, he will be pushing 87 by... <laughs> He'll yeah. be the same age as the character, won't he? Yeah. Jesus. But, I mean, for me, it's... This movie should have been a statement that... We're not going to be anything like the Rings of Power. This is going to be the true Middle Earth that we want. And for me, it just feels like they've really missed the mark so far in terms of like what you said earlier. Marketing seems very poor, um, to be honest. Um, the main character, the main Sal's should have been Halm Hammerhand, not his daughter, you know, who, who seems to come off not very likeable. So I think they've missed the mark with everything, and I think it's quite concerning going into the hunt for Gollum to think, okay, what are they going to do? 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. that for me, you know, I said it to you before when the hunt for Gollum got announced. I was a bit excited, you know, oh, we got the old team back, you know, come on, you've got Andy Circus and that. But then you realise that we're in a different time. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting. And this, I felt, was their first test to go, okay, this is the new way of us doing Middle Earth. And I think it's going to fail. And I'm mm-hmm. not looking forward to the hunt for Gollum anymore. If this is, well, I, 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 I keep saying if because, you know, people are always going to say, yeah. oh, you haven't seen the film yet, but we know how this is going to go down. It's abundantly clear, for, you know, from those reviews that you've read and from not even from those, from the clips that I've seen, stuff that's actually been released already, you know, eight minutes, eight minutes is a big chunk of a, eight and a half minutes actually is a big chunk of a clip to release. Um, My fingers will be pointing at Philippa Boynes on this one. It won't be the director and it won't be any of the animators, certainly. All of this will have stemmed from Philippa Boynes. And I, you know, I, that's that's what I believe because you do see the seeds of it, even back in the Lord of the Rings, in some of the comments she makes, in some of the director's commentaries, um, you know, writers' commentaries and whatnot, some of the behind the scenes. Um, and those Lord of the Rings films could have been so much worse, you know. Um, Arwen, Arwen fighting at Helm's Deep was filmed, which thankfully was, you know, due to fan backlash, was removed and they reworked it. Thank God, you know. But um, then with the Hobbit. We start to see it more with Tariel and other things creeping into it there. So, and then this is a further 10 years. So this has had time to, you know, gestate and mutate over the course of decades. And I I feel like this is going to be the result of that. One thing I was going to ask you, um, kind of like the last thing that I have to say on it really is we watched two trailers for this initially when it came out, we had the, um, the English one, the Western one, and then there was an international trailer which was in Japanese um, with, with the subtitles and whatnot. And we kind of had it, you know, both trailers are actually very different, very different in feel, very different, well, just how they were edited and which clips they chose to use. We actually had like a very different opinion on the Japanese trailer. And we actually kind of got into it a little bit. And we said that, you know, Hera, even when she is being a bit of a girl boss, you kind of see that in a lot of, typical anime style and i think maybe when we heard it in the japanese language some kind of part of our brain shut off where we were analyzing this as a tolkien adaptation and we're like let's just view this as like a cool japanese anime so i think it'll be interesting to watch this in english and you know we'll tear it a new one for absolutely desecrating tolkien which it will and of course the, the japanese language one will but i wonder if the feel of the film will be different if you watch it in the foreign language version and you might go it's pandering to a few more of those typical anime tropes and therefore you maybe you'll be able to get into it a little bit more yeah i, I 100 percent agree and one thing i'll say is is that the voice actor for Hera in the japanese trailer sounded a Loads lot more better. empowering yeah and better than in the english trailer so for me, I think that's what kind of hooked me a little bit. And you're right, it's, it switched something off in my mind. It was like, okay, I love watching anime anyway. And I'm kind of I'm used to sort of that strong, overpowered female trope. So I could kind of get on board with it mm-hmm. a little bit and detach a little bit more. So I was thinking about this, like, if I had a choice what to watch it in, I would definitely watch it in Japanese um and have it subtitled Mm -hmm. um but because we can't in the cinema you know it's gonna have to be the english version but i would 100 percent be down to review the japanese version and the uk version Mm -hmm. just to see the difference as well um just see if they change any of the music or change anything else Mm -hmm. um but one last thing that I wanted to ask you about is this the final thing is expectations. If you could sum up what are you expecting from going into the cinema as an experience, as you know, plot, 
when you're coming out of the cinema, what do you expect yourself to feel like? Um, I'm going into this film... <sighs> Actually, no. Cause I... Okay, so with the Hobbit films... There was a lot of excitement with that first one. I actually really enjoyed Unexpected Journey. And then as the year went on, the story got dragged out. Going to like Battle of the Five Armies two years after that was a real drag. And it felt like a sort of I'm watching this to finish off the trilogy out of a sense of obligation. This film, in many ways, from what I've seen from the clips, heard from the reviews, seen from the trailers, and just sort of knowing where the trend of Hollywood is going with how it writes female characters and I almost feel like I've seen the film already. I feel like I already know what I'm I'm getting myself involved for. But it is two hours 15. So actually, I am kind of dreading seeing this movie. Part of me is still curious to see the animation. Because, um, as I say, I like animated films. It ain't going to win the Oscar for Best Animated Film because The Wild Robot is probably the best film of the year so far. Absolutely gorgeous animation in that. That deserves to win, in my opinion. So I don't think this stands a chance. Uh, so it's a curiosity out of that, but I'm I love Tolkien stuff so much that I'm I'm tired of seeing it just be destroyed in front of my eyes. And there's some bits, you know, rings of power. We can have a laugh about it. We can have a joke about it. But there's a part of me that just keeps getting eaten away each time, just knowing what it could be. And the fact that this is the same team or most of the same team from, you know, they've changed so much. I, I know people people do change. Of course they do. But, you know, 20 plus years ago, they were making that. And now we're at this. And there has been a change. Of course, there's, there's a very visible change. And it's it's just lazy character writing and not understanding this source material or what makes this source material special or what Tolkien's intent was and the historical importance of it. And yeah, so expectations, none. Um, zero um, I am going to be and I'll be really annoyed you know if they enjoy the film fair enough but when you have that mindset and you've got the normies that are hearing the Rohan music and it's just like the sea lion clapping fans like oh Helm's Deep I remember that Ugh. I'm just like oh I hate these people <laughs> like, I hate going to see sometimes I really hate going to see movies in the cinema I uh, know that's like a horrible elitist like way to look at it but um, yeah so I'm, I'm not looking forward to next Saturday. A long day at work followed by an even longer Lord of the Rings movie that's probably going to be an absolute travesty to Tolkien. It's a great time to be alive. <laughs> wow, what more could you want? <laughs> I, I know you said concisely, I know I kind of waffled <laughs> on there, so I'll get down off my soapbox now. It's too high up here. I am expecting to go in... I'm already doubting the movie pretty badly i'm expecting mm. to enjoy the music enjoy the animation the fight scenes i'm expecting to enjoy brian cox's performance i'm expecting to get quite annoyed by most of the dialogue yeah in the film can I'm we do a cringe count like if yes. you can just kind of count, like do a tally or count in your head how many times you cringe what i'll do is I'll, notes. I'll get you know like the britain's got talent buzzer yes and every time it, <laughs> it cringes, i'll just let that off in the cinema I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah yeah so i'll get that i'm expecting to be cringed quite a lot and i'm expecting to feel very deflated and defeated after coming out but i feel like we might be in a minority to begin mm. with of people who won't like the film but i think it'll become apparent later on obviously we could go and we could both really love it because we've not seen it yet we could both go that was fantastic but high chances are we're probably not so i'm expecting us to to um, be in the minority with the various like ratios on like disney's last few trailers i know this isn't disney but like the snow white trailers just got absolutely like torn to shreds yeah. with the dislikes quite rightly so do you think people are more wise to the girl boss trope now you know we've had the star wars sequel trilogy and it was brand new when the force awakens came out we didn't really see much of that but now we've got to the point where south park is ridiculing it right with kathleen kennedy you know put a chicken in it make a lame and gay um so I, I'm wondering if people are aware of it now a little bit more and are going to be 
repelled by it. Yeah, I think you are seeing it, aren't you, really? In the global box office, you look at a couple of the Marvel films recently Mm. that have come out, and I think it's just not even just in the female character. I think people are just tired of having characters who are just great at everything straight away. It's not an in, an enjoyable experience of a story if someone's gifted everything and is cocky about it and is not likable. I think that's where it falls down. You know, you can have great skill. You can She could be a natural sword fighter. She could have that talent. But if she's winning every fight, if she's being cocky and putting everyone down, if she's not coming across as relatable, then, you know, you're not going to like that character. I'll give an example very quickly of Arcane. There's a character called Vi in there where she's a good fighter because you see her training. So she trains at fighting. She's a great fighter, but she gets beat up. So she still loses fights. She's also relatable, and she's got a really... She's down to earth. You can like the character. That's my standard of what I'm going to be comparing these sort of characters to. And if it doesn't hit those key points of being likeable, learning, and... You know, you can have the talents, but you've also got to take some of the beatings for it as well. If they've not got anything like that, then for me, it just puts me off. So, And I Mm -hmm. feel like we're going to have that with Hera. Mm -hmm. Now, that will conclude our predictions and talk before the War of the Rohirrim. I will also be seeing it on the 14th as well of December. And we shall be reviewing it on your channel yes. together. So please tell us more about that and also tell us about any upcoming projects that you've got coming on your channel. Sure, yeah. So my channel name is The Hobbit Fan Editor. Um, that will be getting a bit of a rebrand next year. Uh, I think I'm going to break away from that name and it will just be called Chris Reviews. But currently, as of this video, it will be The Hobbit Fan Editor um so i'm continuing my disney retrospective which should be ending around january february kind of time just going through the last few disney classics there uh, of course many tolkien related discussions and live streams with us to collaborate in as well um one thing that i actually want to do this year because i've got a couple of weeks off over christmas is do a remake of my hobbit edit that i did a number of years ago now so i want to get better quality footage 4k footage exists now of the film And uh, I want to kind of do a 3.0 version, like a final swan song done. There it is in surround sound and best visual quality that you can find. So um, I'm going to be working on that hopefully over the course of this month. And fingers crossed I can get it done this month, you know, knock it out quickly. If not, that's kind of an ongoing project that I'm going to have. And who knows, like I'm going to be watching this film as well, um, War of the Rohirrim with a bit of an editor's mind, knowing the original story and thinking, right, can I cut this down to truly, as closely as I can, tell the story of Helm Hammerhand. So uh, I'm going to be watching this film with that in mind too. So maybe a potential War of the Rohirrim fan edit project on the horizon as well when it's available. I would very much love to see that and you'll probably get the film down to about 15 minutes. (laughs) Yep, we've said two hours, 14 minutes runtime. I think 14 minutes of that will be a very accurate telling of the story and then the two hours is going to be Hero. I would very much be interested to see that cut. I would love to see that, mate. Mm -hmm. And I think that would very much um, hit the audience and I think that would do really well. The but, footage hopefully exists. We'll we'll find out next week if it if it can be salvaged. Yes, we'll do it in Japanese as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wanted to thank you, Chris, for giving me your time, mate. It's no, been a thank pleasure you for having me on, man. again. And thank you. You know, we do a lot of collaborations on your channel as well, and it's always great to collaborate. And we've surely got more Middle Earth content to talk about on Absolutely. this channel and your channel as well i think our next video will be on your channel for Mm -hmm. the review of the film so stick around for that i'll try and get this video out um hopefully by monday or tuesday and before it is released 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Please go over to Chris's channel and give it a subscription. I will put the link in the chat. Please. Thanks, man. No, no worries. You deserve it, man. You're going up and up and it's amazing. <laughs> and it's great to see the people in the chat like bath time and and mm. on. Where's the, the old Motley together? crew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The old Rings of Power crew getting together. And I just wanted to say thank you, mate. And thank yeah, you guys cheers, for watching the video. If you have enjoyed, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and peace.